tell us about Ruby and what happened that uh, caused her to have some hearing loss? Sure. Yeah. So Ruby is my five-year-old daughter. She turned five just the other day. Um, Ruby's hearing loss was found unexpectedly. We were not, um, we had lots of concerns about Ruby, but um, none of them were with hearing. Um, we didn't expect that hearing loss would be um, one of her diagnoses, and now it is. Um, we found the hearing loss um, a few weeks before the pandemic began. And because of the pandemic, we had to wait a number of weeks for her aids and her molds to arrive. So mm -hmm. in that time, we really got to see, um, you know, once we got the diagnosis, but we had to wait for the amplification. It was like very fascinating to see um, how her hearing loss was affecting her in ways that we, we wouldn't have ever known had we not been alerted to the, the diagnosis. So um, a lot of the social challenges she was having, a lot of the um, social experiences that were difficult for her. Um, once we understood that she had hearing loss, a lot of her, of her uh, challenges really made a lot more sense. Right. Um, all of a sudden, everyone was behind a mask. And even though we then knew she had loss, you know, I would be speaking to her and I would, and she would say, move your mask, move your mask. I can't hear you. We became aware, like, wait a minute, she's been relying on looking at our lips for a really long time to really hear us. And I would have never, I would have never known that had not, you know, mm -hmm. Emic began. So we, we learned a lot about hearing loss. And then um, for Ruby, because we were in the middle of the pandemic, when this all, when the hearing loss was diagnosed, she had a lot of quiet time at home to adjust to listening to the whole world. You know, sometimes I think about many children getting the diagnosis, getting their hearing aids on a Thursday and going back to school the next day. And right. for us, we had, you know, it was very unfortunate that it was COVID that caused this, of course, but we were able to really quietly, you know, go on a listening walk, um, listen to what it sounds like to go in the car, aids on, um, slowly add one more person to her environment. Right. And learn really how she needed to listen through them. We learned a lot through the, the process of, of getting them during COVID for sure. Right. Yeah. Um, we will down the line do some genetic testing. It's important to know right. um, if there's if there's an underlying syndrome or, or other disorder that might be causing it. But for now, her loss has remained stable and the AIDS are helping. Her. Okay. And do you know what type of loss is it? Is it like sensory neural? Uh, yes. Okay. Ruby has sensory neural hearing loss, moderate okay. um, in the high frequencies okay. and in the low frequencies. Okay. Uh, and so she has hearing aids as you as we've started to discuss. What type of uh, hearing aids does she, you don't have to give like all the specifics, but, and then uh, what was the process like for the audiologist uh, to fit these hearing aids for her and to make the adjustments? Sure, she wears Oticon open play hearing aids. Um, it was explained to us that with her kind of loss, there's really two options. Um, the Oticon were definitely more expensive, but it was explained that they were the best possible technology. And so, you know, as any mother would want to do, we wanted to give her the best possible technology sure. for, for, um, for her needs, um, which wasn't easy. You know, we, we were not shy to ask for help from both of our parents um, because hearing aids in New York are not considered essential. And um, our, our medical insurance was not going to cover a penny of the hearing aids. Um, and I know we'll speak later, but that's, that's a big part of why we wanted to right. hear with yeah, you. I'm interested in knowing about the insurance and all of that. So we'll get to that, but sure, sure. so uh, the, the process of, of getting the AIDS. Um, so it was a little overwhelming, you know, we went to her ENT with concerns about her, but not thinking there was hearing loss and they did what they thought of as a routine hearing exam, just to be sure that everything was okay. And the test results you know, showed moderate hearing loss and, and we were reassured, you know, she has had some ear infections, there's some fluid in the ears, let's come back in a month, come back, you know, we'll retest, I'm sure it will resolve. Um, at which we did in about February and of uh, 2020. And we were told, oh, the results are the same and this time she doesn't have fluid in her ears. So what we're looking at is like a genetic hearing loss. And my husband and I were like, nope. <laughs> like, the, I mean, I, I, how there's no signs of that. You know, we were mystified by this. Um, and they said, okay, you know, she's a, she's a highly verbal kid. She's, um, 
you know, let's just be a hundred percent sure. Come back in at 9 a.m. after a big breakfast and let's make sure that she, you know, is really focusing and will maybe the results will change. If they don't, we're talking about amplification. And I remember looking at the ENT and thinking, what is the amplification? <laughs> like, I know it, I mean, I know what the, like that word means, but what do you mean by that? And he said, well, I mean, bilateral hearing aids. And, you know, we spent the next like few weeks before that appointment, just assuming that that would amount to nothing. Um, there was just sort of no way that this could happen to Ruby. Um, we just couldn't imagine that that's what we were dealing with. And um, at that third appointment, she had an identical result. And in that moment, you know, we had to fit her for molds and I, and I was alone. It was now COVID and I had to sit with Ruby and, you know, I had no time to purchase a book about hearing loss and prepare her, mm -hmm. um, explain what hearing loss means to her before this process. It was sort of like, and now she needs hearing aids right away. Right. Um, and it was really difficult. I just got goosebumps thinking about it. You know, I had to say to her, you know, we're going to get this new accessory. You know, you know how you need glasses to see? Mm -hmm. Well, we just learned today that Ruby needs super ears to hear. We need to help with your ears. Are you like your eyes need help. Yeah. And, and I think, um, you know, at first it was hard. The molds were hard. That's not an easy process. It's not comfortable. And, and again, you know, I hadn't had enough time to prepare for her for what that really meant for her life. Mm -hmm. um, and then even when we got them, you know, then we were prepared and she, my sister got her this beautiful American girl doll wearing pink hearing aids like rubies. And we had read books and books and books and we talked about it. She was excited to pick them up. Um, you know, yeah. uh, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. And, and I remember a week or so after she got them, I get goosebumps. She, she said, but how long do I need them for? Like, when do I not have to wear them anymore? Very matter of factly, you know, just, but when is this over? And you know, I could get emotional now. I, I, I had to, you know, I took a breath. I'm, I'm mommy. I had to be stoic and realistic and honest with her, but also brave and, and say, you know, um, your, your ears are always going to need some help to hear. And we're always going to have our hearing aids. Um, and you're so lucky because mm -hmm. you're always going to have what you need. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, really have tried to teach her that this is not a challenge. This is not and, um, a, you know, a disability, this is, no, true. This is what makes her unique, mm -hmm. special. Um, and we've celebrated the super ears since we got them. You know, we, we dazzle them as much as anyone can bedazzle anything and mm -hmm. we buy charms and we put stickers on them and we proudly put our hair in pigtails so that everyone can see them. Um, at first she didn't want them to be bright and, um, to put the knife in your heart, you know, she, we would, when she was getting used to them, we would go for walks and she would go like this. She didn't want people to see them right. and cry when people would see them. And that was really hard for, for our family because, um, you know, we, we see them as one of the best parts about her. It's like, right. what's her Ruby? Um, and I think she has really gotten there. She's really proud of them and, um, she loves showing them to people, but you know, but the truth about hearing aids is that it's not all easy. They don't just fix the problem. They fix some problems and they actually create others. So, um, you know, crowds are really challenging for her and loud noises are really stressful. And there are issues with the mask with them. Wearing a mask and glasses and hearing aids is a lot to ask for a five-year-old. Um, of course. So it's not all easy, but we've certainly tried to write a narrative for Ruby that, you know, this is a wonderful part of her life. She's lucky to have them and, um, you know, getting them wasn't easy and the adjustment wasn't easy, but certainly we're very grateful for, for how much they help her. Yeah, right. I think it's important for her to know that her struggles are valid and real and right. no doubt that of course. Um, everyone's, you know, that, that her challenges are significant to her life. Of course. Um, and that she's incredibly lucky that right. that's, yeah, that's she'll true. always have what she needs. Right. Um, and that, 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 that having that, that every single person, I always say this to her, everyone has something, of course, everyone has something they're dealing with that they're right. facing. And for Ruby, this is one of hers. And, and, um, you know, she's part of a community and a family sure. will always, you know, help her. Yeah. Help her. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Now, do you have other children? 
Okay. So there's a little sister Jane. Um, okay. So Jane. Okay. So she's younger. So she probably doesn't necessarily understand that. Like, I mean, obviously that's something that like, you know, so I was curious to know like what Jane, such a pretty name. I love the name Ruby too. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, you know, how they like, how she reacts to it, but she's, she's too young if she's only three. Yeah, no, I actually love that question. Cause I think it's an important thing for other people to understand, you know, yeah. um, to date, Jane is a typically developing child, right. no, you know, diagnoses or, or, or any uh, documented challenges yet. So, right. um, she knows her big sister to be a princess in real life. <laughs> she, she is. She's a dog. She her more than anything in the world. They oh. are very, you know, they're sisters. They, they, they oh. go back and forth, but Jane idolizes Ruby. And, um, when we do, so our morning routine is we come downstairs, you know, after we the bathroom and brushing our teeth, picking out our outfit for the day, we eat in our pajamas because kids get dirty. Oh. And right when we sit down at the kitchen Island where I'm sitting now to have breakfast, um, we put in Ruby super ears. Um, you know, she can't, she can't fully participate without them. So it's one of the first things we do in the morning right. and Jane sits right next to Ruby. So she has started as she's becoming more vocal saying things like my ears, she has this funny voice and she, my ears. And she wants her, yeah. her ears. Ruby wears these gorgeous charms. Um, we have an amazing, impressive collection of them. We have friends who send them to us and certainly we've gotten lots of them for right. Ruby. And Janie is very jealous. She would say, my Elsa eels, because Ruby has Elsa or Anna and, you know, um, my donut eels. She wants to, to look like Ruby. And her birthday was yesterday. And we actually bought her a pretty impressive collection of sticker earrings because oh, she's so perfect. jealous of Ruby's super ears. Of course. Um, and I have to say that that's been a tremendous part of Ruby's confidence about her, hear her hearing it loss is that um, we have celebrated them. We don't hide them. We, we proudly show them to anyone who is interested and wants to hear. Um, and she's growing up with a sister who's jealous of them and, and to feel like they're not something to hide, but there's something to say, look how cool my new charms are. Like that's, of course. that's the, the way we want Ruby to experience her hearing impairment. And, uh, you know, we haven't considered how to explain why she wears them yet. Um, right. And I'll come with not you. there yet. Yeah. But we both wear glasses. Um, I took mine off for the, the interview. I wear glasses I too. I have contacts. I wear glasses. They're right here. Um, yeah. I don't need them for close up, but I wear them pretty much all day long. And Jane pulls them off and my glass off, my glass off, because Ruby wears them too. And she's jealous, you know, she's jealous. And we've had to explain um, well, Ruby wears glasses to see, she needs help to see. So she wears glasses and very soon, you know, we'll use that language about the hearing aids as well. Um, she hasn't pulled them out yet, luckily. Well, that's <laughs> Ruby <hard. Dears. laughs> Now the big question, which leads also into, uh, what you did for this family in Honduras is hearing aids, are they covered by insurance? Are they covered by only certain insurance or is it completely pay out of pocket? So that's a great question. It depends where you live. There are, it's state by state. So you can go to the Hearing Loss Association of America's website. There are plenty of websites where you can look up state by state what the mandates are. Okay. Um, in New York state where we live, your medical insurance companies are not required to cover hearing aids. They're not considered essential, which is just fascinating, right? So mm -hmm. you have five senses that um, hopefully mm -hmm. your body is, is able to fully experience without, mm -hmm. you know, without any disability or challenge. The idea that a child, you know, is not hearing, moderately hearing impaired, um, but it's up to us out of pocket to cover the cost of the amplification she needs to fully participate in the world. I just, you know, um, the day we found out about the hearing loss and it was truly diagnosed on that third hearing test that Ruby had, you know, it was like, wham, your kid needs bilateral hearing aids, wham, for the rest of her life. And wham, it's not covered by insurance. And it was just like, it's a lot. I mean, I, you know, we, I, I'll be very honest. Like we are a fortunate family or we, we, it was not easy for us to buy them and it won't be easy every time. Do you we'll have to buy new well. ones? Sorry. I'm sorry. I interrupt. Do you have to buy new ones like regularly? Sorry. So you said you, you're not, yeah. 
it, I mean, it was, it was a huge, so I mean, the, the learning curve of a new, of a parent with a new diagnosis of any kind is so steep and it's right. so emotional and overwhelming. The implications, what does this mean for her life? What do I need to do to help? How, you know, what do I do? To and then to find out the, the cost component, you know, we are a fortunate family and it was really stressful. So I just cannot imagine, right. you know, many having the financial stress on top of all the others, it's just really unfair. Um, we, yes. Yeah, so the technology and hearing aids, we, the way it's been explained to us is that we should expect every like four to five years to have to upgrade them. Okay. Um, which is wonderful because it means that the, the technology is improving and there'll be even better support for Ruby. And, you know, um, every five years having to spend five, $6,000 on new aids that doesn't include the cost of the molds, which are $200 each time. It doesn't include obviously all the copay costs for all of her multiple visits. It's expensive. It's an expensive, um, it's an expensive diagnosis to manage. So, um, that was a significantly overwhelming realization we had that, you know, over the course of a five-year-old's life, God willing, she lives to a hundred. Think yeah. of how much money it costs over the course of her lifetime if we lived in a different state, you know, that that, that medical insurance would have to recognize this as a, as a necessity. Um, it's really a shame. It's not right. And um, perhaps it's one of the directions that we'll take here with Ruby, we'll see. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I also think it's, I mean, it's so abnormal to think that it's not an essential because I mean, A, lots of people have hearing loss, but B, you see in the elderly, obviously, and this is just degenerative or whatnot, people use hearing aids. It's not something, you know, like you would just think that it, you know and what it's, it's diagnosis, right? It's a diagnosis. So right. it's not a, it's not, this isn't a preference. She's not, she doesn't prefer to hear better. She needs right. to hear better. She doesn't prefer to be able to hear all of the sounds on the earth. She, right. she deserves to, and right. she needs to, it's not, it's not a preference. It's not a choice. Right. Um, and it's treated like one by New York state and by, and by New York state medical insurance companies. And I think it's quite shameful. Right. Um, yeah, uh, I think it's quite shameful. You have a medical diagnosis, you have audiology reports that show a clear need. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you unfortunately have a diagnosis that makes walking difficult, nobody would ever say, well, you'll just sort of have to do your best. You, you know, you know, walking isn't a right. right. Um, getting around is a right. And everyone deserves to be able to have the independence that they that they can and mm -hmm. deserve to have. So there are certain supports for people to make the world inclusive and hearing loss should be no different. No oh. disability should be different. Yeah, no. And I don't know if you know, I mean, but actually the ADA and the disability acts does not cover people that are um, legally blind. And I've spoken with tons of people about this. I actually interviewed, you're in New York state, so you know, uh, but I interviewed governor David Patterson uh, mm -hmm. he was legally blind or he is legally blind. And he told me, and I was like, wait, this is crazy. And he's working on employment and getting, you know, more inclusivity and X, Y, and Z. But I mean, there's so many, then it's, does it's not just hearing loss and it's unfortunate. Um, but hopefully with you guys and the rest of the world with, you know, that are advocating and um, trying to find quote unquote, a cure for hearing loss. Uh, there'll be a positive change in the future. So yeah. recently you, well, post uh, Ruby's diagnosis, you went on a Facebook group uh, called uh, support, uh, I mean, for parents with children who have hearing loss. And you came across a post uh, of, a, of a mother and her child uh, in Honduras who were reaching yeah. out for secondhand hearing aids uh, because- yeah. They didn't have they didn't have the finances to get uh, hearing aids, and you stuck with you, and you went to Ruby and asked, you know, how can we help this family? You told her about it and so forth. Uh, and so, just with all of that, what when you found out about this, how like what what was like quote unquote the aha moment that was like, oh, let, let me go ask Ruby and see like how we can help. Cause that's very unique, which is great. Oh, uh, I, you know, that's funny. I don't find that unique. Yeah. I feel like um, the aha was, if this was my kid, like this is unacceptable. This is unacceptable that there's a child who 
who actually has basically the identical diagnosis and their audiograms look virtually identical. Um, they have very similar kinds of hearing loss. Uh, the idea that this mom, this hardworking mom, who's just like me, like loves her kid fiercely, um, has identified a need and, 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 and knows what her kid deserves. Like I just can't live in a world where my kid gets what she needs and someone else's kid doesn't. I just don't find that fair. And, and I knew that Ruby would agree yeah. because we as a family speak often about how lucky she is and how, you know, hearing support is, is, is a gift, but it's really something everyone deserves. So it was very, it was very easy. It just, I, you know, I speak to Ruby about everything and especially when it comes to hearing loss and, um, I often share with her the things that I learn in my group and in, I'm in many groups for parents of children with hearing loss. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll hear a cool new idea for how to help, you know, with the discomfort of a mask, but with your hearing aids. And I say, Ruby, look, they make these things for your glasses. And, you know, we, we share these things together. So um, Ruby and I love to bake. It's just something we love to do together. And she's really turned into a fabulous little sous chef and she loves to cook with mommy. So I was explaining the situation to her and I said, Rubes, um, you know, I met this boy and his mommy and little Nathan, he needs hearing aids and they're, it's, they're, they need some help getting them for him. What do we do? You know, we got to figure something out. I'm, I'm, I'm stuck here. And she said, well, I love to bake with you, mommy. We should just have a bake sale. Um, just very matter of fact, we should have a bake sale. Um, so we did, uh, you know, it, I said, yeah, great. Okay. And, you know, time is of the essence here. The funny thing is in, in hindsight, you know, I could have picked a date, like a great date in the springtime and set up shop and, you know, try to, try to open up in a, a safe place in town, um, where we had more foot traffic, but, but time is of the essence. There's a little boy with hearing loss who's made great progress with his speech, who needed hearing aids now. And we don't have the money to just buy them for him. We wanted, we, we, we supported the sale of course on our own as well, but we were committed to raising the money fast. Mm -hmm. So the weather that week looked like rain on Friday and, and Saturday and Sunday. So I said, Ruby, it was, it was Monday. So okay. I said, Ruby on Friday, we got to have a big sale. And she said, okay, we can do it. So, uh, we set up, we, we decided to do this. Um, but I quickly realized if we're really going to try to raise a ton of money, we're going to need a lot of baked goods. And as much as my kid and I like to bake, I've got a big job and she goes to preschool and what are we going to do? So I reached out to some local businesses on Instagram. I just sent some emails. Maybe I reached out to five organizations and four of them wrote back really quickly and said, we're in, like, we got to get Nathan some hearing aids. And the response, frankly, from the people who supported our sale was enormous. I mean, my best friend here in town, made chocolate covered pretzels. One of Ruby's old babysitters, um, one of my old students baked brownies and dropped them off. And then local businesses donated a ton of baked goods. Um, actually, once it was in the press that day that we were you know, calling for, for local people to come by and help us raise money, I got a phone call from someone who I didn't know who reached out and said, I make this delicious baked treat. Um, I'm a new business. I just want to donate. And I said, oh, you know, we we have a flyer. I can't, it's too late to put your logo on it. And she was like, no, it's not about that. I want to help Nathan get hearing aids. That's so the response was enormous. We, we started collecting on Venmo on the Thursday and the next day was the sale. And by the time we opened our little bake sale in my driveway, um, we had $2,000. Ruby made a little over 1500 in cash at the bake sale. Wow. And then ABC News came the next week, uh, Long Island News 12 came. And after that, CBS 2 News. So all in all, in, a, in like nine days or 10 days, the five-year-old raised, well, she was four at the time, right. raised $8,200, $8,200. And then in the midst of all of this, which is like the most amazing part, is that because we, the story got shared and because people realized that this little girl did this, um, Phonak, which is the hearing aid company that, um, uh, for Nathan's new hearing aids and NYU where Ruby sees her audiologist, they fully donated Nathan's brand new ears. So they were free to Nathan. All of the money we raised is now sitting in the here with Ruby fund. And we're, we're trying to figure out what to do next. We're, we're, whether we, um, you know, try to support an organization that already does this great work of getting kids hearing aids who have loss 
or if we find children on our own that need help that reach out to us, um, we're not sure what we're gonna do, but we do know that there's gonna be at least three more children who are fully covered with brand new aides who need them. So Ruby, at the end of her 10 days of, of advocacy and, and bake sale magic, um, she's gonna help four kids with hearing loss get new hearing aids. So we had a little idea, little tiny, let's have a bake sale, said my four-year-old, and, and it really turned into this amazing thing. It's incredible. Ruby, what do you want to be when you grow up? The friends at Different and Able want to know. Uh, uh, a ballerina. You want to be a ballerina? A real life on stage ballerina. Hmm. My name is Ruby Madeline Gansman. Hey, Ruby Madeline Gansman. They also asked me, at our bake sale, what was the most delicious thing that we sold to friends? What was the most delicious thing at the bake sale? Mm, the cookies were delicious. They were really good. Actually, the cupcakes. The cupcakes were really awesome. Ow. And they said here with Ruby on them. Yeah. And that's because special. My name is Ruby. Hmm. And I hear. And you do hear. So with this bake sale, you net you basically created uh, an organization or fund, however you want to say it, called Here with Ruby. Yeah. Uh, how did that kind of come about? And so right now, I mean, Nathan has his hearing aids. Uh, we put them in the mail. We put them in the mail Wednesday. So we amazing. actually mailed them on Ruby's birthday. It was an amazing, it was an amazing coincidence, but they arrived at NYU on Tuesday. And so first thing Wednesday, I dropped her at school. I picked them up. And when I got her from school, we went to the post office and she put dinosaur stickers on the box and we sent it to Honduras. It was a great way to honor her birthday and, you know, sure. realize she's lucky. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, and I'm sure the outpouring of appreciation from Iris and Nathan was, like, remarkable. Yeah. Iris and Nathan are, like, special to our lives now. I mean, sure. Ruby, and, Ruby and Nathan FaceTime, or uh, we don't use FaceTime. We use um, WhatsApp Facebook video, actually. <laughs> yeah. And face the Facebook video calls. Um, and they're friends. And sometimes Ruby will be like, oh, we have to, um, we have to send Nathan a doll that has hearing aids. Like, I wonder if he needs a doll with hearing aids. We actually put a Superman or an Avenger, excuse me. He, no, no, someone, no, no. some, I'm, that's not my thing, but we, we, we put some super ears with, the uh, with, the uh, puffy paint on, uh, on some, on a doll for him too. Um, they're friends now. And Iris is, um, she's an amazing mom. She's an amazing mom who loves her kids. Like all moms do and um and does tremendous things for him uh okay. just to get his new aids you know financially it was difficult for them as it is for everyone right, right. by hearing aids um she's not alone in that she what she what she is alone in is um is she was brave enough to ask for help not everyone is brave enough to ask for help it's it, right. you have to humble yourself to ask for help and and her love for her kid is bigger than that and i just think she's an amazing mom she's a She's a medical school student, a single mom. She's she's working a tremendous job and raising an awesome kid with some unique needs and and she needed our help. So I'm just so glad we are connected because I really respect her. And um, she and Nathan actually sent Ruby a birthday present in the mail from Honduras. Um, oh, amazing. Like we're we're very connected now, you know? Right. Connected through oh. this story. Yeah, no, it's wonderful. And then hopefully post pandemic and you know. I don't know what age or, you know, but, uh, you know, you can travel to Honduras. Or I maybe, love it. Yeah. We'll start I, it. I hope that one day we can. I really yeah. do. Yeah, definitely. No, it sounds awesome. So, okay. So with all that said, now you have, um, a here with hearing or here, yeah, here with Ruby. Yeah. Fund. What do you plan now? You have the bake sale, you funded Nathan's, uh, hearing needs. What do you plan on doing now? Like, do you, I mean, and it's, I know so new, but like any mini goals uh, yeah. that you want to quote unquote accomplish? For sure. Yes. So what do we do next? I don't know. Um, um, I've had a lot of phone calls in the past few days and weeks. Sure. Um, and it's been amazing to see the way that um, the hearing impaired community, mm -hmm. but also just like the community in general um, in New York and Long Island, Course. have responded to what Ruby did. And, um, and I'm not sure what's next, um, whether we'll fully become our own 
foundation and, and start our own 501c, or if we will, you know, take the funds that Ruby has raised and support another larger organization that is doing this kind of sacred work of helping children here. Um, we started here with Ruby the few weeks after she was diagnosed, there was a hearing loss association of America walk and they needed a team, you know, they, you can sign up to, to participate. We needed a team name. And I just thought, I want everyone to know that they're here with Ruby H E R E. But I also want the goal to be that everyone can hear with Ruby H E A R. And mm -hmm. if our goal is to raise money for this community, we want people to know that hearing listening with Ruby is, is our ultimate goal. So very early on, you know, we were made aware of how privileged we are as a family that she can hear and we want other people to hear with Ruby. So we, we set up this walk and we raised a ton of money for HLAA kind of quickly, just because people love Ruby and, and want to help. And when we realized how supportive our community would be, our network, our family would be, um, we thought, this is a misuse of money. HLAA does amazing work, but but we want people to hear with Ruby. And so we want to funnel any future fundraising into supporting the cost of hearing loss for families with children with hearing loss. So we started this small bank account and I, you know, I labeled it here with Ruby in my app. And whenever we collect money, that's where it goes so that we know it's sitting there. And when we come across someone who needs help, we can act. Now that we've had so much success and Ruby's raised a significant amount of money, um, we're not sure what's next. I mean, her hearing anniversary is May 11th of this year, and we certainly intend to have another sale. Um, maybe we'll have a bake sale. Maybe we'll sell some merchandise. Um, we will see, you know, I, I, I'm not sure. I, I, I'd like Ruby to direct that. Um, certainly we're going to have a big party to celebrate a whole year of full engagement in her world and her life. And um, and that's the next step is, an, uh, is the next big fundraising push will be around her birthday and um, to be determined, you know, I'm sort of hoping others will reach out to us and say, you know, I need some help. Um, I, I need to help my kid here because that's very much what Ruby and me and, and our family, that's what we want. But what tips or like words of advice would you give to parents who have now experienced uh, hearing loss of a child? Wow. Well, first of all, I am no expert in parenting a child with hearing loss. I am a parent. I have one child with hearing loss. Um, everyone's experience is so unique and every child, you know, they could have identical diagnoses and need such different things. So I think, I guess the first thing I would say is with the caveat that I am no expert, right. um, please, please say that, <laughs> please air that. Yeah. I, uh, I, I think I would just say that, um, as hard as it is for our kids to listen and hear, we have to listen and hear them, uh, their needs, um, what's hard, what helps, what does not help. Um, everyone, um, you know, I try so hard to instill in Ruby this goal of advocating for herself, making sure that if her battery died, don't wait till you get home. You tell your teacher, I need help my battery and my right hearing aid died. Um, if someone, you don't, you don't hear what someone says. You say, I'm really sorry. I didn't hear you. Can you please repeat it? Mm -hmm. um, so teaching your children to advocate for themselves, but then being prepared to listen and respond to what you hear, what they say. Right. Um, we, if you, if you are a parent who is fully hearing, um, you can't understand it. I don't understand it. I don't know exactly what her experience is like. So the best way I can honor and care for my kid is to listen to her and to hear with her um, and, and be there for all of it. And, and I guess the only other thing I would say is self-confidence, like anything you can do to celebrate, you know, I think I know parents and I, re and I actually really respect this, that there are people who are like hearing loss is just one part of who she is. It's not, you know, we don't focus on it. We don't make a big deal because it's not a big deal. And the truth is, you know, that's true. And I think that's, that is definitely one way to approach it. Um, and I think it's really admirable way. Um, my way as her mom is to make it one of her favorite things about her because it is a defining part of who she is. And, and I want her, you know, if one day she feels like she regrets that she has to wear them or she feels upset about them, we will honor those feelings. Mm -hmm. But but 
but putting it out there that this is who she is. She has these awesome super ears. They help her so much. They make her unique. Um, they're, they're a big part of her life. And anyway, no matter what your kids' challenges are and whether they're truly disabilities or they're just growth opportunities, whatever it is your kid ch- struggles with, mm-hmm. helping find the confidence to surround them with so that they, they can say, I have this and I have all of this and, and, and trying to balance, you know, so that there's always more good than, than struggle. You know, I think that's what our kids deserve. Um, and frankly, when you treat your children that way, they, they put that back in the world, you know, Ruby, I can tell you, we don't meet a lot of new people these days, but even if we're getting gas pumped by an attendant, you know, she will roll down her window and say, I'm Ruby and I wear hearing aids. What makes you unique and special? Like she will ask people that Mm -hmm. um, because we have told her that you should be proud of what makes you unique and special. It's not something to hide and it's not something to feel embarrassed by. Um, And I think that doesn't benefit just Ruby. I think that benefits the whole world. We need a world where our kids grow into people who love everyone. One piece of advice, I guess I would also share just one more thing I think is that advocating for your child's needs um, is an essential role of a parent of a child with unique abilities. Um, It's not a given that your children will get everything that they need, um, Mm -hmm. not for any negligence um, on behalf of their school or the people that care for them, but because they don't know, They, they don't, they don't know. And um, I've truly learned that advocacy is is very much balanced by educating people mm-hmm. and saying what you need. And the educating part is so essential. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone, everyone that Ruby interacts with, even if it's an hour long outside sports class on a winter break day, or it's a teacher who she's with every single day of her life, they all are told what helps her, what's hard for her. Um, what they need to consider. It's just, it's really an important part of being a parent of a child, any child, your kid needs something, you know, you say it with a smile and you say it respectfully, but you, you're their mama bear or their papa bear. You have got to be the voice they don't yet have. And part of them developing their own self-advocacy skills is hearing you do that for them is hearing you say, Oh, did you know, I don't know if you noticed Ruby wears hearing needs and, uh, yeah. Um, it's going to really help her if you move your mask when you speak to her. Um, it's going to really help her if she sits closer to you, you know, whatever it is, you got to say it, your kids need to hear you say it. And the people that help them need to hear it too. Absolutely. This was so great. 